Hi hey folks, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about the mainspring in a handgun. If you're like most people these days where your experience begins and maybe ends with a self-loading handgun, semi-auto handgun, like the SIG P210 that I have here on the bench, partially disassembled, then the term mainspring might seem a little odd because what we call a mainspring on this is this spring right back here. And what that does is it drives the hammer. And that's really all it does. It just causes the hammer to swing forward under that spring pressure. And you might think, that sounds a little bit silly. What an arrogant name to call that, to call that thing the mainspring. Why would you do that? Because this spring here, that we call the recoil spring, well, that's doing a lot more. It's a bigger spring. It's up here in the middle of the gun. It's not just some thing back in the grip. Like That's a way more, more critical spring, isn't it? Why would we call this the recoil spring? Call that the main spring. What did he do to earn that title? It's a travesty. But if you look back before the days of the auto-loading pistols, the semi-autos, you have revolvers. So we got the Colt Python here with the side plate off, cylinder out of it. And this V spring here is the main spring in, in the revolver. Now, different revolvers are set up a little bit differently. Smith and Wesson's, if you go to like a K frame, it's kind of a, a single leaf type spring. If you go to OJ oh, frames, they've got a a coil spring. So different revolvers are set up a little bit differently, but this is your mainspring. Now, why would we call it the mainspring here? And it becomes pretty obvious why it's called the mainspring here, because it drives basically everything in the revolver. You have other springs, of course, um, in your side plate for your cylinder latch. You have that spring that just drives a cylinder latch. You've got this little spring here for your cylinder stop. You've got a little spring in here for your double action dog. But eh, you got a firing pin return spring. You have all these other springs. But this is doing the major motions of the revolver. And on a revolver, where this term originally came from, it is the big spring, and it's driving the gun. If you look at it, you know it's driving the hammer. So that's rather important. I mean, you need the hammer. It's a pretty critical function of any handgun to have something that that causes a strike to happen, whether it's a striker, whether it's a hammer. Something needs to drive that, so that's pretty important. It also rests on the other end of it against the little rebound arm here. And what that does is it sets in this slot in the hand, and it's what tensions through the hand the trigger, so the trigger returns. So if we pull the trigger, partially let go, you can see that it's actually, through this arm, pushing down the hand, which is pushing the trigger back. It's also because of a uh, an angled surface in here, basically, it's causing the hand to pivot forward. You can see that it keeps it tension so that it wants to push up and in into the into the ratchet that the cylinder was in. You would see that. So it's doing all that stuff. So you're getting your trigger reset out of that. You're tensioning your hand with it. You're driving the hammer. So that's why you call it the mainspring. And it's a term that just carries over from the days of revolvers into the automatic pistols we have now, where the spring that drives the hammer, the spring that makes the fire control work, is called the main spring, and then the recoil operation, being a newer invention, is called the recoil spring on an auto-loading pistol. And that's about all I have for you. It's a simple, simple concept, but one that a lot of people don't really understand 
because of how the technology has changed. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it answered maybe a misconception you had or cleared something up. And we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.